Virginia Hall was as legendary as she was feared. Allies in resistance circles knew her as Marie of Lyon. Downed Allied pilots would learn of a friend to save them from sure fate, Olivier. Her self-deployment in Europe during World War II soon placed Virginia Hall as one of the French resistance's most powerful undercover agents. The Gestapo were said to have feared her. The Germans nicknamed her Artemis for her incredible feats of sabotage and espionage. Yet amazingly, one of World War II's most potent figures achieved all this with one leg. Welcome to History on Fleek. Today we look at how a one-legged woman became World War II's most feared spy. Virginia Hall was born on April 6, 1906, in Baltimore, Maryland. Her formative years were indicative of the impressive leader to come. Her studies included three different languages, German, French, and Italian, at both Columbia and Harvard University. The Virginia, even from a young age, had her eyes on an international and global career. She would continue her studies abroad, studying in Germany, Austria, and France. Her instincts were validated, as in 1931, she would be hired as a consular service clerk for the American embassy in the Polish capital, Warsaw. Yet the most unlikely turn of fates was just months away for Virginia. In 1933, Virginia's career took another turn. Following her appointment in Poland, she was transferred to consular clerk duty in Turkey. During her time in Turkey, Virginia would succumb to a fateful hunting accident. The incident occurred while Virginia was hunting birds. She is said to have slipped and discharged her gun by accident, the gun firing into her right foot. Virginia's leg was given a surgical amputation beneath the knee and was given a wooden prosthesis to replace it. Affectionately, or otherwise, Virginia is said to have named her wooden leg Cuthbert. Despite the odds against her as a woman in diplomatic service and a woman with a disability in diplomatic service, Virginia showed no signs of slowing. Following the loss of her leg, Virginia Hall continued her work as a consular clerk across Europe in both Estonia and Venice. The obstacles to her ambitions were clear. Despite her years of service, the United States Foreign Service turned down her application for diplomats several times. Ironically, even during Franklin D. Roosevelt's administration, Virginia Hall was turned down by the Department of State for a diplomat role on the grounds of her disability. Having faced double standards and some pretty outright discrimination, Hall would resign from her consul clerk duties in 1939. A war was breaking out on the continent, and Virginia had other plans. Nearly some five years before the U.S. entry into World War II, Virginia Hall had already deployed, if you will. In early 1940, Hall could be found in France, working as an ambulance driver for the French forces. Despite the personal danger and risk that service on the continent brought to Virginia, it also furthered the career of a woman who would not be stopped. Following the fall of France in June 1940, Virginia moved across Europe to Spain. It was there she encountered George Bellows, a British intelligence officer. Bellows was taken with the no-nonsense Hall and her unrelenting drive. He provided her with a special contact in the form of a phone number. Hall had been given contact to the Special Operations Executive, a newly founded Allied espionage force to counter the Axis powers in Europe. In April 1941, Virginia Hall was recruited by the SOE. After her training, she arrived in Vichy, France only the second female agent to be deployed to the SOE's French brands. Based in Lyon, Hall went undercover as a reporter for the New York Post, giving her free reign to interview and collect information of vital import to military planners. As part of her disguise, Hall was said to have changed her entire wardrobe, abandoning Parisian chic for a look and concealment that had her entirely blend in. As if secret agent was the role she had been preparing her whole life for, Hall had the unenviable task of learning the craft by herself. Intrinsic knowledge of the do's and don'ts of espionage, hiding places, bribes, arranging contacts, and distributing equipment were matters Hall learned on the go. No doubt the dangers of such work were not lost on Hall. It has been said that the motto of any worthwhile secret agent is, I doubt, therefore I survive. And Hall was no exception. A meeting of SOE agents in Marseille was to take place in October of 1941. Hall was invited, but she declined, feeling something was off. The meeting turned out to be a sting, raided by French police, leading to the arrest of around a dozen agents. 
It was this sense of the landscape and intuition that made Virginia Hall one of the longest standing secret agents in France. When the news of the SEO agent arrests made it back to the F Branch HQ, escape plans were instantly made. A prisoner, one of the wireless operators named George Begg, smuggled letters from the Mozak prison back to Hall. Hall recruited one of the prisoner's wives to bring food while visiting the prisoners, including sardine tins which could be fashioned into keys by discerning parties. Along with other items, the sardine tins were brought to the prisoners, and come July the following year, they made a successful escape. Having hidden in the woods to avoid a mass manhunt, by early August, all the agents were able to make it to Lyon to meet with Hall. It was there that the agents could be smuggled and transported safely to Spain before Great Britain. Though the escape was marked as one of the most useful operations in World War II espionage, with many agents returning to the SEO, it had not gone unnoticed by the Germans. The prison escape had infuriated the German command. France was soon flooded with the Abwehr and Gestapo looking to tear down the French resistance. As 1943 rolled in, the Axis pressure on the French resistance soon turned its attention to Lyon. Hall, ever cautious and wily, escaped to Spain before London, without informing a soul. This escape included a 50-mile two-day trek on foot. In July 1943, Virginia Hall was granted an honorary MBE from the British government, though she'd certainly made a reputation in the eyes of the German forces. The loathsome Klaus Barbie is quoted as saying, I would give anything to get my hands on that limping Canadian bit. Even the Gestapo regarded her as the most dangerous of all Allied spies. The British were convinced Virginia Hall was compromised and could not be sent back to the field. Virginia Hall decided she would no longer be working for the British. Following a wireless course, she contacted the American Office of Strategic Services and was soon out in the field again. In March of 1944, given a forged French ID and code name Diane, Hall worked with the OSS to train and arm French resistance to aid the coming invasion of Normandy. Virginia Hall was back in her element, a spy craft maestro. Her disguise was that of an elderly peasant woman, her limp, her gray hair, and even her teeth filed down for effect. She successfully aided the resistance. Her work in the south of France included organizing and finding drop zones, establishing safe houses, and providing arms to multiple resistance groups. By many accounts, the resistance groups were highly effective in disrupting German infrastructure before the invasion. Yet astoundingly, Virginia Hall's war experience would finish bittersweet. Virginia Hall gained a fearsome reputation for her wartime heroics, yet as a woman this both served her and betrayed her. Her last deployment in wartime was out of any disguise and superior to many resistance battalions across the south of France. However, she found most young resistance soldiers balking at her authority. Her post-war employment with the CIA was littered with discrimination. Despite a pantheon of experience, she was mainly sidelined to desk jobs. A retrospective CIA report would declare her abilities were never properly utilized, and she overshadowed her male colleagues who felt threatened by her. This being said, following her passing in 1982, Hall's bravery and incredible heroics received review. Both British and French ambassadors honored her on the 100th anniversary of her birth in 2006. Even the CIA would name a training facility in her honor in 2016. Virginia Hall was all about service, the task and the job at hand, everything else was static white noise. She was the only civilian woman awarded the Distinguished Service Cross in 1945, yet turned down a public award from President Harry Truman on the ground she was still operational and anxious to get busy. Here's to Virginia Hall, service personified and, oh, did I mention? She did it all with one leg. This is History on Fleek and we'll see you next time.